We're going to take your pension funds. They're getting ready for it here. You know, our media won't say why the Greeks are rioting. They just say austerity. But when we talk about austerity, Gerald Salente, explain to people what austerity means under these Madoff types. Well, what it means is, is that everybody's standard of living declines. They tax you to death. They make it more and more impossible for small people to get into businesses because they put more and more charges on top of them and direct all the business to the big guys. Let's make this really clear about this bailout going to Greece. Number one, it's against the, econ the European Monetary Union Charter for any bailouts. Number two, it's explicitly against the U European Monetary Union Charter for an IMF bailout. Who's the biggest funder of the IMF? Us. We, the people of the United States. We're the people that are now bailing out the banks, the J.P. Morgan Chase, the Goldman Sachs gang, the Merrill Lynch mob, the Credit Suisse. Where is all this money going to? It's going to the bankers. Number one, it's against the economic, the European Monetary Union. And number two, now we're footing the bill so these guys can get bailed out. What you're seeing happening in Greece with the people taking to the streets is going to happen worldwide. I want to make this very clear because, Alex, this is going to lead one of the elements leading to the Great War. Systems are going to be breaking down. They're not going to be able to stop the people any more than they're able to stop them in Thailand. Thailand hardly makes the news. People don't know anything of what's going on there. You've heard me say this over and over again. My expression as a Bronx guy is when people lose everything and they have nothing left to lose, they're losing it. And they're going to be losing it against the red carpet crowd who believe that they are the entitled people, that they could fix everything if only you give them anything, everything. And I want to add something to that, because the magnitude of this fraud with banker bailouts, they're not bailouts. They make money on the way up selling the crud. Then when the governments and companies and pension funds that have bought the fraud start imploding, the government gives taxpayer money as a bailout to the private banks that engineered the fraud to then lend the money to the government or to the pension fund that's now bankrupt and then now those pension funds are even in more debt to the same bankers that engineered it. So to, so to quantify this, we loan the banks the money that they then loan us back. I mean, this is fraud on top of fraud on top of fraud and you notice that as soon as they agreed to the 146.5 billion for Greece that suddenly Portugal and Spain started going under because the banks said look they bought this now let's trigger it here and so they're holding all of us hostage and they own the mainstream media uh, and so the mainstream media most of the time will not tell the truth Dylan Radigan does occasionally they let Ron Paul on sometimes to tell the truth but I mean here's the Washington Post headline uh, for nations living the good life, the party is over, IMF says. Washington Post. Uh, but, but, I mean, going back to that, the, uh, the level of the... Wow, that was crazy. <laughs> that sounded like uh, one of those party, party horns. I guess we lost Gerald Salente. Uh, that happens occasionally with the video Skype connections. So we're going to uh, connect back to Gerald Salente and continue along those lines uh, with our guest today. Uh, special effects brought to you by Skype, I guess. Do we have Gerald back? We don't? Okay, we're going to go to break in a moment, and I'm going to bring that question back to him after the break. It isn't just that the banks sell derivatives and then the economy implodes, and then we have to bail the nations out. When you read about this Greek plan or the U.S. plan or what happened in England in the last wave, Our money then goes to the banks. Gerald, uh, you, you got cut off. We're going to break. But start answering the question about how we loan them our money to loan back to us. Yeah, but you see, you left one element out, Alex. You have to be fair about this. They give the, the government all of their toxic crap as collateral. That's what they use as the sham to make it legitimate. 
And that's what's been going on. The governments around the world have been using this lie that they have collateral so that they can then loan the bank's money at near zero interest rates so that the banks could go at back out, reloan it to us, and continuing their gambling. All right, stay there. We got to go to break. Uh, so you're right. It's even worse than I was saying. I want to take a few calls before Gerald Salente leaves us, but they have to be questions specifically, quick questions for Gerald Salente. But we love the directions, you know, the spin the wheel directions that people take us in. Uh, the different angles that we wouldn't have thought of. I want to pick his brain here today. 1-800-259-9231. 1-800-259-9231. But, Gerald, you make a great point. I can't even uh, properly describe how big the fraud is. They sell the derivatives knowing it's crap. They have insurance companies certify it. The insurance companies get bailed out after they already get paid to certify it. Uh, the big banks uh, get to fence the assets and buy real assets when the bubble's being inflated. Then when it implodes, the banks get bailed out uh, with trillions of dollars, and then they say, oh, but we're going to give the governments the toxic assets, and every economist we've talked to have said that those have negative value, so they're actually giving the governments a time bomb, so it's a triple screw job. That's right, and let's not forget the, the uh, rating agencies, as you mentioned. You know, they get a free ride as well. They're getting paid to rate the junk, and they rate the junk excellent. You can't get away with this in real life. And I've said this over and over again. The merger of state and corporate powers is called fascism, and fascism has come to America. We're talking about the financial sector. We could talk about it in agriculture. We could talk about it in pharmaceutical. We could talk about it in retail. Every sector of this country is controlled by a handful. What is it, Alex? Six banks controlling 60% of all of the action in the country. How can you deny what's going on? You can't. This is not socialism. And I heard you talking about, before I came on the air, about these drug busts and how they use these fascist tactics to beat up people, to beat up the little guy for, you know, smoking a joint, while they let the big guys free and turn, quote, a blind eye to opium production in Afghanistan because they don't want to hurt the family farmer's income. Who are they kidding with this stuff? So what we're looking at is really a complete takeover. And when people say, why isn't the government doing anything? They think that there's a revolving door. That's the story that they've been fed. Well, you know, the people go out of government and then into these private corporations, and they, you know, they have an inside track. It's not a revolving door. It's a wide-open door. And that door is filled with the same people in every agency that are fronting for the big corporations, whether it's the Goldman Sachs gang, or whether it's agriculture. It's the same story over and over again. Well, look at Walmart globally. has 46% of all retail sales, and it's all based on Chinese slave goods. What about Mark Faber? I know you respect his opinion. He's got a very good track record of predicting things uh, just in the market. So you have you know, general analysis, which is so important. Uh, but he's saying 90% chance in the next 9 to 12 months that China will completely collapse into depression. Oh, we've been saying this as well. It's the Chinese bubble. Everyone knows that the, one of the major reasons why we have recovered with this fake recovery from the March 2009 equities market collapse is because of China. And China has dumped in nearly a trillion dollars worth of money, plus they're loaning out money all over. They have a huge housing bubble going on there. And I do respect Mark Farber's uh, analysis as Bob Chapman's as well. And Farber's right on the money with this because there's another problem going on in China. And again, this is where we look at a bit differently than a lot of others, and that is the social unrest. They've had over 70,000 major riots and disturbances in China in 2009. They have to keep their 1.2 billion people happy because if they don't, the whole thing turns to chaos. 
and it's going to be chaos in China as the world economies decline and they have no place to dump their product. So yes, we agree there's going to be a major unraveling in China. Now, we're about to break. Long segment coming up. We'll take some calls and get into other trends. Uh, but I've got a Twitter question to the Real Alex Jones Twitter uh, by Ferreira. It says, I'd like to know if he has the same forecast for financial collapse that he had one year ago. Have things changed or have things accelerated? Well, let me just answer that question and then have him come back and elaborate. He said almost four years ago that in 2008 there'd be a huge implosion. That's on record. And he, he described it in the subprime mortgages as the trigger. Then he said right after the bailout in 2008 that 2010, and Chapman said this too, that the money would run out and then the big implosion would start. We'll be back.